Now, you might very well think that, but of course I couldn't possibly comment. Hello lovelies, still pretty brain sick and with some physical symptoms, but hopefully I'll be able to do the various podcasts and shit over the weekend. Um, I'm also still doing a lot of freelancing, so things might be a little slower or I might miss the occasional day uh, on videos, because I'm still raising money. Um, for the stuff with the house. t shirt Historian's helping me with Ronin, so some small progress continues there. And I found a couple of new artists for that, or, well, old artists with whom I have established relationships, shall we say. Um, but I don't have a lot of money to spare for projects either right now, as I'm still saving towards the work on the house. Uh, Table Topless should be back next week, I think. At least one of the games is going to shift back to the later time. Um, because that's where the audience is. Um, at least hopefully that will help a bit. Uh, even if it means a lot more tiredness <laughs> for me. Which will complicate matters further. But it's, it's fine. It's worth it for that. Um, I have temporarily caught up on the review books that I've had in so there's some stuff still on pre-order that I'm waiting for that might show up randomly and I'm sure people will be sending me other stuff to review uh, but if they don't it'll be more know your role stuff which is you know what I call my delvings back into the history of the hobby and the obscure corners of my gaming collection uh, rather than the new stuff so uh, maybe that or maybe some of the PDFs that have been waiting to be reviewed since the crust of the earth first cooled uh, somewhere on my drives uh, filed and forgotten about um, all right into the comments there's one I want to do want to cover first because it's important and interesting then i'll get the kalergi stuff out of the way um and then we can just relatively speaking chill for the rest of the comments so i've made a few videos on the personal independence payment uh here in the uk that's a support fund that you get if you're disabled um to help you with the extra day-to-day -day costs that you incur um and you get that while you're working and so on but getting this is difficult so but occasionally I get comments from people on those um, people looking for support while they're going through their assessment so uh, Freestylers UK said today I had a second PIP assessment over the phone to get more information it was about 2.30 p.m. and lasted about 25 minutes after it ended I turned off my phone to get some peace and chill out for a bit put some music on then there was banging on my door and I could hear shouting and radios it was two paramedics telling me I had been calling my GP threatening to kill myself we never talked about low mood at all in the second assessment and in the first I never said at any time I was thinking of doing anything <clears throat> all they asked me is if I ever had any suicidal thoughts it was pretty embarrassing what my neighbors must think I don't know I've no idea what the assessor has said to my GP surgery for this to happen. I was shocked, shaken and embarrassed. They left and about 30 minutes later they were back, banging on my door. This time with a member of the crisis team on loudspeaker wanting to know why I had been calling my GP threatening suicide when I had not. Last time I called my GP was to uh, book uh, a nurse's appointment for a vitamin injection. Crazy. I have no record at my GP practice of suicide or threatening to do so, just some depression associated with long-term illness. This is not the first time that I have run into this recently. Over the last couple of weeks, I have seen two or three TikToks and seen two or three other posts by people in the disabled community saying that something similar has happened to them so something seems to be going on um, whether it's the PIP assessors have been told to be uh, extra sensitive 
because, I don't know, maybe the government doesn't want someone killing themselves while there's an election on or something. I, I, I don't know. Um, or it could be someone malicious, but then how would they know? Uh, but yeah, this seems to be happening weirdly more often, unless it's just the algorithm serving me up something that already happens relatively rarely, but I'm finding out about it a lot more. But yeah, as if as if we needed more problems <laughs> when we're applying for assistance. Um, yeah, it's uh, concerning. So if you are a disabled person in the UK, uh, maybe keep an eye out for that and uh, watch out for it or talk to your GP um, that you're going through this process and know you feel fine or whatever. Not fine, but you know what I mean. All right, on the Kalergi plan, uh, JP says, lol, I'm not even white, but you're either lying or just gaslighting if you think this isn't true. Which isn't a demonstration that this plan exists or anything. Um, and a lot of these loons seem to have freshly discovered the word gaslighting and seem to be uh, applying it liberally even where it's not appropriate. Um, wh why are you so incapable of telling that this video is strictly speaking about the Kalergi plan right if we were to try and explain say cattle mutilations and someone was claiming that it was UFOs and I debunked the fact that it was UFOs Right, that that wouldn't mean that the cattle mutilations weren't happening. That this is an imperfect analogy because what you lot claim just really isn't happening. It, it, I would only be debunking that it was UFOs, and not that it wasn't. I don't know goblins, or some random person working their way up to becoming a serial killer, or a disgruntled ex-farm worker, or, or something. Yeah, I've only debunked that it was UFOs. And similarly here, I'm only interested here in debunking the idea that there even is a Kalergi plan in practical idealism, which which there isn't. Why why is that so difficult to understand? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Max Lumen say, isn't it weird that Angela Merkel was awarded the Kalergi Award for her immigration policies in Germany? Um, so the existence of a Kalergi Award isn't anything to do with immigration it's to do with rewarding people who have done good things to advance the idea of a united europe um and keeping the peace and all of those sorts of things which i you know i think merkel over her political lifetime certainly did a lot to stabilize europe and um forward the agenda of european unity so it's not at all surprising that she would get the Kalergi Prize, which is, after all, nothing to do with immigration. <sighs> Rabbi Shekelberg, and this is how these people give themselves away instantly every time, says, it's all a conspiracy, Goy, don't be angry. Well, it's not a conspiracy because it's a conspiracy theory, more specifically a paranoid conspiracy theory, that there is a plan laid out in the book Practical Idealism by Count Kudenhove Kalergi to, I don't know, something. But there is no plan in the book, right? So, and must you give yourselves away? Uh, Legoman says, your hour will come, traitor. Uh, there also seems to be an uptick in these people making threats, uh, which on top of the shit I've gotten from other videos is not particularly fun. But I know they're never going to act on it, so it's just yeah interesting to note the feverish uptick in aggressive nonsense. Uh, Knockout Fever actually provided a link to a PDF of Practical Idealism, which is actually a fairly dodgy translation done uh, by a far-right racist for people to read. Uh, you can find versions that aren't that uh yeah that's that's promising that some of them are now linking to the text but of course the text 
does not contain any plan. So by all means, link away because it proves what I'm saying, not what you're saying. Uh, Jesus Jennings says, this guy in the video is a joke. Nice try, bro. Uh, we can see what's going on. NGOs like Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, Israel Aid, and Jewish Family Services are the ones bringing the men of fighting age to your countries. Keep spreading the truth, guys. None of that has anything to do with the Kalergi plan. I think we can all probably understand why the Jewish people might have a vested interest in the safety of migrants and refugees. It's not exactly sinister. Um, I think we we all know the history and why that might be, and that none of that has anything to do with anything. As to men of fighting age, well, that's men of working age, e.g., the ones who are best placed to emigrate, find work, and send money back to their families. Uh, if you want to stop e economic migration, invest in the countries from which people are immigrating. It's not rocket surgery. Uh, so, the politics video. So, so, slowly easing away from the most contentious to the least contentious, I guess. Uh, Steambub says... UK Conservatives hate cuck Tories. Trump did nothing wrong and is best president. Biden, Obama, Bush, Clinton sucked balls. Well, Bush. Uh, and you do you. Forgive me for speaking on behalf of the Conservatives, even though I've never been to the UK, but as far as I know, the Conservatives are sick and tired of the Tories being blue-tie Labour. That's why they lost a bunch of support. They support mass immigration of low-skill Labour. They did nothing about the housing shortage since they have money in the housing market, probably why they want immigration to keep the housing prices high. Allowing the prosecution of Christians, don't know what that's about, no political will to punish grooming gangs or any other foreign criminal, the grooming gangs included natives. Still following international regulation even after Brexit passed and allowing gender affirming care for children. They don't. Uh, I don't care what you do when you turn 18, but letting children get life-altering surgery they don't um, and not tattoos is wrong that's all I can think of off the top of my head yeah being right-wing does not make you conservative I mean it's weird to see anyone describe particularly the current conservative government as being blue tie labor because this is the most right-wing the conservative party has been since Thatcher wanted concentration camps for AIDS victims and wanted to ban homosexuality even as, even as an idea and ran roughshod over the entire British social structure. Um, so yeah, it's a, that's a very weird thing to read, <laughs> as well as uh, not being true, really. Um, the Conservatives do not support mass immigration, but they, while well, their rhetoric is anti-immigration, their uh, economic libertarian side has forced to recognize that we need immigration particularly of of low skilled labor and and high skilled labor to be to be fair um it's got nothing to do with keeping the housing prices high because the immigrants are just going to rent um and net not buy for many years if at all so I, I don't know what the prosecution of christians thing is maybe you meant persecution but either way there's none of that going on uh, the grooming gangs, as I said, were not Asian grooming gangs. They were mixed grooming gangs. Um, foreign criminals get punished as much as anybody else. Um, you have to follow international regulation, yeah, even after Brexit, um, or even without Brexit, because international trade and so on is regulated. There's international courts of justice and so on. Um, Gender affirming care for children is not permitted in any way, shape or form. Um, you can search and find the NHS policies for that uh, going back some years. That's been the case for a very long time. Uh, and certainly nobody under the age of 18, save in extreme circumstances, uh, with a great deal of oversight, is getting any life-altering surgery. Uh, as to Trump, he continued wars. 
Uh, he didn't withdraw from Afghanistan. His actions and attempts to wheel and deal behind the scenes contributed to the start of the Ukraine war, as did his toadying to uh, Mr. Putin. He blew a $2 trillion hole in the US economy in order to hand out money to the already wealthy. Um, and those changes are permanent, while the relatively small pittance of quote-unquote trickle-down that everyone else got is set to stop. Uh, he tried to steal an election. It's always projection with these people. Uh, is a civilly liable rapist. Uh, a confirmed con artist, again in civil court, and he's now convicted of attempting to pervert the course of the last election with hush money and more false bookkeeping. And all this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, you've got two doddering grandpas running. One's a criminal and a senile piece of shit. The other's just senile. And it's a lesser evil vote, but it seems obvious which way you should vote, um, even economically. Uh, because the US economy is in a much better state uh, than it was under Trump. Uh, some of that's, you know, COVID rolling back, but not all of it. Hellsent says, I'll have to look into that concern about Orban, Viktor Orban of Hungary, specifically where he has drawn power away from and what freedom of speech is like there. My view being that freedom of speech is a key factor in opposing authoritarianism and in regard to the media. Being clear about the meanings of terms and standing by them is important to avoid confusing them. I separate global, neutral, descriptor of scale, globalism, applying efforts to achieve effects felt on a global scale, and globalist, political movement, arranging and filtering globalism towards their views, goals, and interests. Internationalism, would I be correct in interpreting it to simply meaning beliefs which don't include nations or borders? So um, Orban has closed down various media outlets, interfered in and closed down universities, closed down Hungary's borders, uh, breaking EU regulations that the country had signed up to. So that causes diplomatic problems when a country can't be relied upon to keep to its agreements. Uh, the independent think tank Freedom House has downgraded Hungary from free to partly free since Orban took over. What he's doing is a slow, creeping authoritarian takeover, similar to what's happened in the States under Trump uh, and in the UK under successive leaders since Thatcher. Um, and he's brought more and more things under his direct or indirect control to remove any real possibility of political challenge while he continues to hold power. He's used state resources in elections since at least 2018 um, to bolster his own political campaigns, and his actions may even get Hungary thrown out of the EU. So, um, never mind Brexit. Here comes Hexit, <laughs> I suppose, but thrown out rather than voluntarily leaving. Why? Uh, due to the degree in which he's acting on Russia's behalf and as Putin's lapdog. So, yeah, there's a, lo there's a lot to go over there. Uh, Dracorian says, Brexit was the correct answer. Trust was politically assassinated. The UK doesn't need immigrants that don't even contribute to society. Um, Brexit was only the correct answer if the question is, how do I royally fuck over this country for at least a generation? Uh, then that's the answer. Uh, Truss needed to be taken out before she did any more damage <laughs> to the UK economy because uh, she royally fucked it. And immigrants do contribute to society. If you want to speak purely on fiscal terms, non-EU migrants pay in about 1.1 times what they take out over their lifetime in the country. So literally none of that is true really except maybe that trust was politically assassinated but she needed to be um sometimes you just gotta remove someone if they're doing that much damage uh foxtrot element says sorry brother you're one of my favorites however i do not do politics this is where we say goodbye i don't do politics very often we are in unusual times with two big elections with lots of controversy around them and I still make videos that are nothing to do with politics. It's not like you have to watch everything 
I have playlists. All of my content is divided up by playlist. So, um, you may recall that the potatoes attack video um, resurfaced recently, probably as a result of the similar sort of attack on Wendigoon. Um, at least that's the best theory that I've been able to come up come up to up with as to why this has happened. Um, but it's certainly very strange and has led to a torrent of abuse and threats and nastiness towards me, uh, which isn't nice. Uh, user 777 says, I came across this video tonight wondering if the Wendigoon drama and being subbed to other TTRPG channels led me to this two-year-old video. It's kind of funny. Yeah, well, with my video or the Potatoes video, John John Battle, um, I think I'm right in saying that he's soft transitioning, uh, but if he won't respect my political identity, I feel little impetus to respect his gender identity. Um, unless he takes things back, then maybe. But yeah, I think that's what's caused it. Um, on the pastel mush video, and wow, you seem to like it when I get pissed off at stuff, don't you? Uh, I, I, I have regret, because <laughs> I don't like doing that kind of content, but still. Uh, Subcommandante says, interesting that the adventurers on these new D&D &D covers seem to be victims. The old red box cover had a warrior attacking a dragon to get the treasure. Here's a bunch of characters facing away from the threat that's just about to eat them. Yeah, they're all they're very passive, aren't they? The, the, the most you see is someone charging up a spell, maybe. Uh, City Crusher says, Look, this is all very simple. Hobbies, games that guys enjoy have been trashed like this for a long time. Compare D&D &D with the covers of romance novels, what the ladies enjoy. Romance novel covers display sexy, epic characters in vibrant colours. D&D &D cover art used to look like that until the femmes infiltrated the game. Um, That's a somewhat misogynistic spin on, on what is what is going on. Um, and it doesn't make any internal sense, because if they're trying to appeal to women more, then you would expect the covers to be of a similar ilk to those romance covers. You know, vibrant, sexy, eye-catching, um, and they're not. So it's probably something else. I also think that, given my reasonable amount of experience uh, with Lady Gamers o over the years and with um, my cooperation with women from the porn industry, um, maybe that's a slight bias on that second part, but as long as I've played RPGs with women, they've wanted to play sexy characters and they have liked uh, sexy art. Uh, I think like anyone else, there's a degree to which aspiration uh, plays a role um, and, and gets people's interest. I'm umming and erring a lot today. Mr. Brother Sky says, Why is Venger on the cover of the Dungeon Master's Guide? Lol. Um, silly answer, because that's the power that Jolt gives you. Um, decent answer. I think they're just leaning into IPs, characters and so on, that they outright own. And I also have my suspicions, or suspicions, whatever that means. I also have my suspicions that the popularity of Isekai is maybe driving some of the thought in the new edition, uh, but we shall have to wait and see. Uh, Mr. Prickley says, this is the problem I have with the use of AI, trying to recreate the overused popular art style as opposed to hiring artists with differing styles. That's where you see a lack of imagination, a lack of innovation, and a huge deluge of cookie cutter, a cookie cutter variants that do nothing but underwhelm. See, Properly prompted, AI can produce better results um, than the recent D&D &D covers. So I, I don't know that it's that. Um, the output of many of the artists is what you tend to get if you don't prompt um, stylistically when you're using AI. 
uh, then it tends to come out with a similar mush. So, but is the AI being led by the art that's fed into it, and thereby following the trend, or vice versa? And if you, as a real physical artist, can't do better than AI, then what's the issue? Exactly. Bradby says, support DC20 instead. Um, I need another fantasy RPG like I need a separating fistula at this point. Um, DC20 does not look different or interesting enough to me uh, compared to the many, many other fantasy games that I have. I do appreciate the graphical style that they're presenting. Uh, people are doing things. There are action shots throughout um, their Kickstarter and there's strong lines and bright bold colors so I appreciate that but I just don't don't think I need another fantasy superheroes game at this point uh, plus I need to save money so I can't even buy it out of curiosity at the moment uh, Rhino Watcher says not a big fan either but art is also what I would consider the most unimportant part of the game I wish more games sold art free versions um, the market appears to disagree with you. Uh, artwork seems to be extremely important to a lot of people and a lot of the iconic pieces uh, reflect well on the games that they are a part of. You know, the old red box cover is the definitive D&D artwork, I, I think. Uh, Planescape had a definitive artistic vision behind it that made it work Dark Sun, similarly Vampire the Masquerade did with its Tim Bradstreet and its simple graphical cover um, and so it goes for, for a lot of games and successful or not uh, artwork is important to most people um, if you're not a huge fan of artwork uh, can I suggest purchasing Japanese RPGs uh, where it's virtually all text for whatever reason um, Ace up in a sleeve says maybe pastel mush is just the center of hotelling's law applied to colors for those that like it wishy-washy so I learned something new today hotelling's law is an observation in economics that in many markets it is rational for producers to make their products as similar as possible uh, this is also referred to as the principle of minimum differentiation as well as Hotelling's linear city model. So the idea here is that if everything looks the same, people can't necessarily distinguish between the two and may end up buying your version instead of the proper version or or whatever. Or that by all pursuing the same sort of sort of model, you're competing on an even playing field to some extent or another. Um, interestingly, dating advice pretty much runs the opposite. Uh, you should double down on your style, uh, be as striking and different as you can be, because that acts like a natural sort of filter and limits the people who might approach you to those who are more likely to be interested in your in someone of your style and tastes and, and so on. Um, you could also call this the mockbuster law, because mockbusters rely on grandparents not really knowing what they're buying and trying to buy something for their kids and getting the wrong thing. <laughs> so um, there's probably something to that. Yeah, and the same as there is about McDonald's looking practically identical everywhere around the world. You know, and there's, there's something about comfortable familiarity. Uh, but I do despair every time I see some new crowdfunded product for 5th edition that just apes the same style and art and everything completely. It's just like, uh, make an effort, please. On the D&D Problematized Edition, Bill Allen World says, I enjoy this channel's content, but please, Jim, lower the audio levels on your opening music. I feel like I nearly blow out my speakers when I click on one of your videos. Okay, so I don't know what's going on there exactly. Um... I have been manually adjusting the levels for everything to be at the same degree. So it could be that human hearing perceives certain types of sound as being louder. Um, it could be something else. I don't, I don't know. But this past week, 
I have been using an auto leveler uh, on my videos so please let me know if you've noticed the difference or if it's too quiet because it sounds too quiet when I do playback but let me know uh, on my werewolf review Brothwood says terrible review if you've started watching this then just stop now if you're more than five minutes in I'm sorry that is wasted time it can be condensed into entitled middle-aged whitey fella is annoyed that new things happen and takes away his casual racism and sexism plus loads of whinging grow a pair your wendigo was shite no matter how many times you said how I mean if you're going to criticize someone for sexism racism and so on then deploying ageism sexism and racism in your critique of a critique rather undermines any point you might have felt that you would have had uh, return to your anodyne pablum where your hypocrisy won't be so obvious zang sup I'm reliably informed that I'm terrible at pimping my stuff, so here I am, pimping my stuff. You can buy most of that shit that I make over at post-mort.com. Hope to see you there.